Hi, my name is Julia Silgi, and I'm a data scientist and software engineer at our studio. And today in this week's um, screencast, we're going to use um, Tidy Tuesday data, um, which is also 30 day map challenge data um, ab about um, geography and maps. So we are going to use um, data from the, um, the SP data large package that is about um, landslides in Ecuador and we're going to build a model to predict if a certain point is a landslide or not. Uh, a geographic data and spatial data um, is special. If you ever tried to make a map um, and thought, oh, this is different than most of the plots that I make, um, you notice that and it turns out that's true for modeling as well. And so we'll walk through um, one of the important characteristics that, or one of the important considerations that you need to take into account when you're dealing with spatial data and that's how you resample your data. So we'll use um, a special method for resampling data that takes into account um, the fact that when it comes to geographic data, often the points that are close together are more similar than, um, than points that are far away from each other. Okay, let's get started with this um, spatial data for the for Tidy Tuesday this week and the 30-day map challenge, of which I am participating for one day. <laughs> All right, so... Um, Let's see, I think I um, I already loaded the tidyverse up there, but I'll do it again here. Um, so this this week for Tidy Tuesday, we are focusing, folks are focusing on um, spatial data, the um, the SP data and the SP data large packages, and the really great book, um, Geo Computation with R, which is really interesting and full of, you know, lots of great... Um, examples. One of the um, examples in the book walks through how to um, how to uh, train a, a model, um, and so I'm going to look at that um, and walk through how to do that using some tidyverse tools and tidy modeling tools. So this data set is a data set of um, landslides and um, not landslides, um, in uh, southern Ecuador. And so this, these X and Y are the spatial data where, like, uh, where it is in, in this region in so southern Ecuador. This is um, whether it's a landslide or not. And then this is um, information about, like, the slope, um, uh, information, you know, the elevation, um, information about, like, the water flow. It's sort of, like, information that's really about, like, the spatial characteristics that are there um, uh, on, you know, on the... I guess on the ground, you know, I guess you would say there. So um, it's a, you know, it's it's small here, but it's a nice little data set for getting, um, it's a little bit of experience with dealing with spatial data. So let's make one exploratory plot or map um, and then get started on talking about modeling. So I'm going to put, let's see, let's make this, put the data in here. So I'm going to make a map here. So I'm going to put X and Y. And then, um, so we're going to put those, uh, put those land, those landslides there. So I'm going to say, let's say the color here will be the landslide um, info there. And I am going to, um, since this is a map, I'll often do like chord fixed on a map so that we have the same um, uh, aspect ratio here that we want there. And so we have, um, uh, you can see that there's a little bit more landslides here in the middle versus on these, you know, sort of swaths up here. And then if, you know, we could take any of those other information we have and kind of map it underneath to see what's going on. For example, I think I'll do, um, I think I'll do elevation. So, uh, I think I'll use, I think I'll use my favorite, the stat summary hex and I'll say, um, so here Z will be, um, elevation and, uh, let's say, I'll say alpha, make it a little bit transparent. Um, I'm going to make it pretty big across like 15 or so. And then um, let's change the alpha on this. 
And these colors are going to look like super bad together, but um, we can, wow, yeah, that's painful to look at. But you can see that the, um, the, the elevation is high down here in this corner and then it's low over that way. Uh, let's, let's bump that down here. So this isn't like a raster image. Um, I, you know, I am far from being an expert on spatial data and mapping, but you know, you know, you can get started with this kind of thing and see that we have, um, high elevation down to low elevation that way. And, um, see these things here. Let's, let's at least do something with those awful colors. Um, so I'm going to scale the fill, I'm going to use Viridus, so this is a continuous, so I'll do that. And then I will scale the color. Uh, I'll just use manual here and the values. I'll just put in two colors. Um, I'll use like a light gray for the false. I think it'll turn out false if I put it first. And midnight blue for the ones that are true. Whoop. Values. There we go. True, false. Okay, that looks that looks pretty good. And then we can change the labels here. So fill, I'll say elevation, elevation. And for color, I'll say landslide, like that. Um, which I, I I looked at the data set. I'm and I'm I'm like ninety percent sure that's what, that's what this is. I'll be honest. I have a little bit of some uncertainty there, but I believe that's what we're predicting. Um, okay, so you can kind of see the, there, you know, we see some relationship here. It's certainly not linear, so it's kind of interesting. You know, we could, and we could look at anything else that we had in that landslide data, but this, this is, um, this is a map. We made a map. I made a map. Excellent. All right, so the next thing I want to do is, is get started with some modeling. So I'm going to load the tidy models meta package, and then I am going to, um, add, um, um, an, an, an add-on package, like a, like a, um, a package for spatial resampling. Um, it is, it is a small package right now. It basically has one, um, method here, but it turns out spatial data is special, is special and different. And it has, um, the main thing that is special about, or a important thing that's, uh, special about spatial data is that um, points that are close to each other tend to be similar to each other. It's called autocorrelation. And um, so uh, we had to take that into account when we do things like resample. So let's make two sets of resamples. Uh, so I'll set the seed. So I'm going to make, um, I'm going to use this spatial clustering. So what it does is it splits the data into the number of groups that I want um, using k-means clustering on, um, you know, whatever variables I give it that are the, um, the spatial information. Um, <clears throat> it'll probably make sense if we look at it. So I'm going to say the chords are... Um, X and, and Y, like that. And then we don't need 10. This is a very small data set. Let's do five. So let's call this the good folds because this is appropriate for, um, for spatial data. And now let's, um, I bet you can see where this is going. Let's make some bad folds. And for this, I'm just going to use regular cross-validation here. Let's do the same number of a five and let's, um, let's stratify, you know, cause that's what normally we would do. What's it called? This. Okay. So these are the bad folds. All right. And let's look at how these are different from each other. So notice over here that, um, uh, there, there, there are, there are different numbers of observations in each of the folds, whereas in the traditional splitting, it, it's, it's all even. Um, and that's because it, this used k-means um, clustering on the coordinates to um, find clusters that are closest, like close clusters that look like they belong together via k-means here. Um, let's, uh, Let's make a little um, function so to plot this. So I'll say fun here. Let's call it plot splits. And I'm gonna put in a split here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take each one of these here. And uh, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bind rows 
So I'm going to bind the analysis of a split, the analysis set of a split. I'm going to call that um, analysis. I'm going to add a column. I'm going to bind that together with the assessment set of a split. Um, like this. And then, um, and then let's pipe that into uh, a plot. So let's say um, it'll look a lot like this plot that we made up here. So X, Y, except color now will be analysis. That new plot, that new um, point, uh, new column that we made saying whether it ended up in the analysis or the assessment split. And then let's um, say geome point and uh, I'll do that chord fixed bit. And I think um, like we can take the, the labels off of the color. And let's see, that, this always gets me, but I think like in a function, it, that usually works better. Okay, all right. So I made a little function here for like um, um, printing the splits and then I can, um, I can w use walk from per to pr to um, print all the splits. So for, first, let's do it for the the good folds. So I'll do this. I'll walk through all the splits that I have and um, uh, and plot all of them. So it's going to do it pretty fast. Oh, that didn't work at all. They're just black. Mutate analysis color analysis. AES. Oh, haha. There we go. Let's try again. Okay, better. All right. So I'm going to just, uh, it, so it did all five of them. And so let's go back. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So notice what happened. So the, in these folds, the analysis or the assessment set, like the holdout set is, um, is, um, all together, uh, geographically, spatially, and um, and so and the and the the we hold out these different sets um, in these different folds. So I'm sure you can guess um, that that is not what happens if we do normal. Um, Normal cross validation just you know does it randomly. So if I like scroll back through all these, like sure they're random. Uh, ran the assessment set is the holdout assessment set is you know random. It's different. Oh that I one two three four five like it's different each time, but um, it's spread out over through this whole area in southern Ecuador. And so what that means is that. Um, uh, Plots or points that are close together are not together in the same um, fold, in the same like holdout set of a fold. And that, you know, I'm kind of giving away the answer here, but that can have a bad effect on our on our uh, results when we are trying to estimate how something is going. So let's fit and evaluate a model and see how big of a difference it makes in this um, in this particular. Example. So let's just fit a, a straightforward um, logistic regression model like this. And I'm going to make a formula, a LS form like this. I can't remember what what data is in here. Okay, so we are going to predict um, LSL points with everything else. So slope, um, these things that are about the water flow, the elevation, the area, so uh, C A R. So, so a lot of these things are about like how slopey is it, how, like how steep is the slope, um, how much water flows through, um, how much of it is water, like how much of it is water, how much, oh, it's the elevation, so and so, so and so forth. So let's make a workflow to combine those things. So we'll put a formula, we'll put the logistic regression model. And now I'm going to fit those. So I'm going to load, um, uh, I'm going to set up a parallel backend. And let's see, let's set, set the seed. Um, although 
I don't think there's any randomness here. I probably don't have to set the seed. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> so first let's do the, our regular results. No spatial, um, no awareness of the spatial nature of this data. I'm gonna fit the resamples. I'm gonna fit the workflow to the bad folds. Bad folds like this. And now I am going to do the spatial results where I'm, I'm gonna fit the exact same model, same model, but to the folds that have the awareness of, um, of the spatial nature of the data, where I have within one uh, holdout set in a fold, they are close together, and it, so it accounts for that auto correlation. All right, and let's let's look at the results. How did it do? So I'm going to look at the metrics for the regular results, and then let's look at the metrics for the results that take have the awareness of the spatial data, and let's see what we have here. I mean, whoops. Let's do this. It's not at the very bottom. Okay, so accuracy, ROC, accuracy, ROC. Notice that um, when we use the, the cross-validation folds that do not take into account the spatial nature of the data, we, have, we get higher performance estimates. We think we're doing better. When we use the spatial folds, we think we're doing worse. That's because we had a, this is overly optimistic. These results here um, don't, don't take into account that points that are close to each other or more similar to each other. And so we don't, we get this overly optimistic estimate of how it is that we will do. So we, if we did that, we would be fooled. And when we went to go, um, you know, predict on new data or try to, you know, draw some conclusion from our model, we would be, um, we would be fooled into um, an inaccurate understanding of what it is that is happening. So this is the more accurate understanding of our like how, how, how accurately, uh, how, um, how much predictive power, you know, this model is able to have. And, you know, this is something that is true. This is the right way to, or the more correct um, way to um, uh, measure the performance of data that has um, spatial characteristics, even if you move, you know, beyond some very simple, um, or, you know, some more straightforward model to a more complex uh, machine learning methods. All right, we um, fit this uh, logistic regression model, predicting whether a point um, whether a point had a landslide or not based on characteristics of that point, like elevation and how sloped it is and water flow at that area and whatnot. And in this case, um, using spatial resampling turned out to be very important because of how because of that spatial autocorrelation, which is the word that means um, points that are close together are more similar than points that are far away from each other. Um, you know, spatial data is special, and um, you know, the, that's all kind of about what this week's um, Tidy Tuesday is about, and uh, you know, especially I do uh, really recommend you check out the book, Geocomputation with R, for getting started with lots of these different kinds of problems. So um, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you've got feedback on spatial sample, the package, or or other methods we should include. We would love to hear about them on the GitHub uh, page, and I will see you next time.